Hello everyone, I hope you all are doing well and finally I'm here to cover the much awaited video that you all have been asking me to do the Grand League rotations, how I make my Grand League rotations, what is the thought process behind each and every pick, each and every rotation, what are the factors to keep in mind that is the most important part of this video before you try to aspire on how to win a 1 crore Grand League or how to crack one of those big Grand Leagues. So yes, that is the main aim of this video to try and cover those key pointers on what are the factors you must keep in mind when you make those rotations and ensure you like comment share subscribe whatever you want to do and in the comments tell me what are the factors you look at too and a big thanks to the fan to play app they're helping me do this video and keep in mind that you check check them out my refer code on the app is fcp and the app link is in the description so go check them out right away and without any further ado let's first up start with the key factors that i look at and the first factor is the pitch now there is nothing bigger than the pitch in cricket because it's on that 22 yards that that game is going to be played so it's very important for you to understand what is the expected behavior of that track on that specific day historically so the first thing that you should do when you start to study a game is look at the historical record of that specific pitch of that specific when you see the ground dimensions understand whether the square is short straight is short or it's longer boundaries and based on that make decisions in your team also try and look at the live pitch report that you get to see pre toss or post toss on television that will give you a great idea and great understanding of what you can expect out of the track see if the track is drier try and load up more spinners in that case if it's flat out and there are shorter boundaries and load up the batters while if you see a tinge of live grass you can pick up the seamers so that is the first point for you to keep in mind second factor is the toss now obviously no game of cricket is complete without understanding how that toss also supports the pitch so now if i know that there's a tinge of live grass on that pitch and if the team that is that is one the toss is selected to bowl first that should give you a further indicator that it might get, have some movement up front and apart from that it might also be good for chasing so that's how you must try and read into the conditions now also when you look at the toss after the toss look at the playing 11s that are announced now if you saw that tinge of live grass on the pitch and you see that the team that is bowling first or both the teams have picked up extra seamers that is an extra indication for you to understand that yes there might be movement in that track while on the other hand if you see that the pitch is dry but you're not too sure ki, is it the flattest sort of dry or is it the dry that will help spin again the playing 11 might give you an indicator there because when you see that playing 11 and you see maybe an extra spinner in that team then that's a sign for you that the track might take some turns so try and use the toss the pitch and the playing 11s because obviously when the team is picking the playing 11s they have already seen the pitch they already have assumed that in case we bat first what will we do in case we bowl first what will we do so that playing 11 will give you a big indicator of what the team thinks about the pitch because we are not on ground but we can surely try and pick the cues of the people on ground which will happen via the team so the toss and playing 11 very important factors now your third factor is your first innings death bowlers very risky for you to leave first innings death bowlers because they're going to bowl in scenarios where there is going to be pressure so you will see at least two or three dream teams out of 10 where you'll see that first innings death bowler being a dream team captain or being a dream team vice captain so key factor for you to keep in mind especially when you're not sure ki, will it be good for batting will there be any spin but whether all those factors are there or not there there will always be pressure to score runs at the death of the first inning especially in a t20 or an odi so that will be a key factor to help you especially when you're confused about the kind of rotations that you want to make just make the captain and vice captain at least in a few teams if not all of the first innings death as your prime choices fourth point for you to keep in mind second inning spinners now why am i saying second inning spinners two factors first factor is that when spinners bowl in the first innings they generally bowl somewhere between the 7 to 15th overs now 7 to 15th overs what do you see in a game of cricket you generally see either a good power play and then the team is trying to stabilize and set up a good base for the death overs or you see some early wickets and in the case of those early wickets what happens is again the team is trying to stabilize and get around with a decent base so that the guys who come in at the death are able to explode so you generally see in the first innings especially there's not much of attacking options that is taken against spin unless that spinner bowls at the death or in the power play it's a different story but most spinners come in in the middle overs 
which will mean that while their economic ability would be higher their wicket taking ability might be slightly lower so again these these two factors especially the first innings death bowlers and second innings spinners are something that are generic options for you to take when you're not too sure about the pitch when you're not too sure about the conditions these two factors always hold true because first innings when you bowl that when you bowl those overs of spin you're generally not bowling under too much of pressure so the batting team is not forced to attack you but in a chase when you're bowling in those middle overs and if the batting team has not had a good opening set of overs they're forced to attack that spinner which will also mean example if i have an opening attack of bumrah and bhuvi and i know that they're going to bowl well condition the supporting seam that will also mean that okay maybe i know that bumrah will take a few wickets bhuvi will be economical and then when the pressure comes then the spinners in the middle over maybe chahal or ashwin will come and take a lot of wickets so hence second inning spinners will be a key factor for you ground dimensions like i already discussed for the spinners and pacers you'll have to look at it differently so generally when we see shorter square dimensions that will mean that spinners are slightly discouraged because the batters can loft them square but when you see longer dimension square that also means that the spinners are more in the game because you see that sweep sweep and the square cut being played a lot which will mean that the spinners will be more in the game with the longer dimensions because then those lofted shots won't go over the boundary they'll probably be in the fielder's hand but when you see the longer straight dimensions that will mean that the pacers will be more in the game because you're not able to take that kind of risk that that easily so generally when the dimensions are shorter it is generally a little more dangerous for spinners but longer dimensions will be good for pace and spin so that is the ground dimensions factor then we look at the weather now this is not something that comes into factor in every game but it does come about at least once in three or four games where one is if you see cloudy conditions now when there are cloudy conditions you know that pacers will get some help there's overcast conditions will help them so that is one indication second indication is when you see a sunny day maybe it's a day t20 or it's a day, it's an odia that's starting at 9 in the morning or 10 in the morning then what will you see especially as we move towards the afternoon spinners will get more help so that is another factor for you to keep in mind sunny conditions and a drier pitch which is only going to get drier would help spin versus the pacey conditions where you see a little bit of grass up front or you see a few clouds and a little bit of overcast conditions that means spacers could get help so according to that you make those rotations based on those conditions you decide which kind of players you want to pick and then you also have to keep in mind what if there is a short in game now if the game is short in example first innings no rain is expected conditions are expected to be clear it's a t20 full 20 overs but second innings i'm expecting only 8 to 10 overs to be bowled what will i do in that case i'll load up first innings players whether it's first innings batters first innings bowlers and then from the second innings i'll probably scale down bowlers because i know maybe the bowler is going to bowl only one or two odd overs or i know that the batter is going to face only 15 20 balls and has a pressure chase so that is how you think about the game and how you think about balancing the players that you pick based on the weather because we have always seen that the shortage will always happen in the second innings of the overs because first innings how many of overs are bowled are bowled but the short the cut will always come towards the second innings or it will be cut equally across both innings and then we look at a very big factor when you pick your fantasy teams and a factor that dictates how people select their teams is recent form so recent form will play a big role always for you to decide now example the games at eden garden it's mumbai versus kolkata and you cannot leave rohit sharma based on his recent record but can you leave him based on those ground conditions not at all so you have to add up those specific things now maybe rohit sharma in his last five innings has not crossed 30 but you all know how his gra- ground record at eden is so how do you balance that out in your grand league teams maybe in your grand league teams you know recent form is not good so you pick him in your team don't make him captain vice captain maybe you leave him in a few teams and in one or two odd teams because you feel like the ground record is great and opposition record is great in that case you make him captain and vice captain but i think recent form is obviously a much heavier lever than the ground record which are my 8th and 9th factors obviously ground record is important because that gives the confidence to that player to go and play well there based on his history but yes recent form for me is a big factor and historical opponent record now if you know that rohit has done well against kkr that is one factor i know that he's done well against them at the eden gardens but on the other hand you also have to see maybe if the same game is being played at wankhede 
what is his historical opponent record on that specific venue because that will give you a key indication of how to handle that specific team matchup against that specific player and whether you want to pick him or not and the last factor which many people look at first but i think will be a key factor based on these other things that we discussed is matchups now i discuss with you how the pitch plays an important role how the toss plays an important role we'll take a popular ipl matchup virat kohli versus sandeep sharma example the pitch has some live grass and punjab if uh, when sandeep was playing for punjab at that point is bowling first against the team of bangalore what will you see in that case you will see some movement up front and then in that case you can see that match up being activated but if sandeep is playing for whichever respective team that he is and kohli is playing and it's a flat batting track in that case will i drop virat just because i've seen that sandeep has dismissed him five times no so you have to look at the conditions and are they favoring that specific match up or not if they are not then don't take that punt because then that becomes and unnecessary risk for you to take so matchups are important but you also have to marry those matchups with the conditions that are on offer with the team that is on offer do i feel like virat can just play out one over of sandeep and then attack the rest of the bowlers that also depends on the quality of the rest of the attack if i know that the other three bowlers are also excellent then it's worth the risk but if i know that the other guys are not matching up then he's going to just probably play him out and attack the rest of the bowlers so that's how you look at the matchups and that's how you visualize it so that is my two bits on how i rotate my gl teams what are the factors that i think of and what i specifically do so ensure that you also try some of these things out tell me in the comments what are the things that you try out while rotating your gl teams i'd love to hear from you and get your opinion on the same ensure you download the fan to play app right now link is in the description thank you so much for everyone who tuned in have a great day this game may be habit forming or financially risky play responsibly